Hey, welcome to Warehouse TV. It's it, we're gonna have the rubbish joke shop again uh, today. So that's something to look forward to. Welcome to Warehouse TV. We're gonna need for today's episode. Uh, nothing, just your Bible for fast and fun. Get it done. I just gotta find mine. Hold on. Yeah, I got it. I got it here. Um, here we. go. Yeah, that's what you're going to need for today. Your Bible, fast and fun, get it done. And also, you could try and remember some of the jokes from the rubbish joke shop in Give It A Go Joe. All right. Let's start with fast and fun, get it done. So get your Bible, all right, because you're going to be looking up a memory verse, okay? All right. Here we go then. Okay. So the way this works is, I'm going to give you a Bible reference. Okay, you have to look it up before my Bible stops spinning. Yeah, you think you can do that? <laughs> All right, here we, here we go then. Okay, now, I've never spun the Bible in the joke shop before, so we'll see how it goes. Here we are then. Right, you ready? You are looking up. All right, Psalm 145, verse 3. Okay, Psalm 145, verse 3. Yeah, so go to that. If you can't find Psalms, what about trying right in the middle of your Bible and opening up there? You probably you probably open it up on Psalms. If not, look at the contents page. Okay, Psalm 145, verse 3. All right, it's about to drop. And I haven't got any tea, so I'll just catch it. All right. Okay. So it's a new month. So new memory verse. So check it out. Well, it's not really new, so we're a few weeks now. Okay, here we go then. Let's read this through together, okay? Nice and loud now. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse 3. Okay, let's, let's go again. You all right? You say it out nice and loud again? Okay, let's go for it. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse 3. It is such a, a, a great thing to be able to say and think of and imagine how great God is. I mean, you can you can put God in a, in a box. He's so massive. He's bigger than the universe. So we can always have reason to praise God because he's so great, so wonderful, so loving and so kind. And he thinks about you every day. He knows who you are. He knows when you sit down and when you stand up. He knows what you like and what you don't like. And he wants to be your friend every day and for you to walk with him. All right, so he's really worthy of your praise. He's amazing. Okay, well done that, well done that memory verse. Bookmark it for, for next week. Okay, awesome. Okay, it's time for time for birthdays. No shout outs today, but birthdays. Okay, so check, check this out. A little bit of a treat in the shed today on the birthdays. <laughs> yeah, oh yes. Check out this little fella. Hey! <laughs> All right, he is a gingerbread man. There he is. That's that's going to be quite good. Um, the thing is, of course, we've got a, <laughs> we got a, we got. Uh, I don't like this sauce, Daddy sauce, HP sauce, sauce thing. I don't don't really like it. So we're going to dip his head in there, and uh, and we'll see how that tastes. Same same colour. Look, both brown. Okay, let's get the candle lit. How we're gonna can't stick it in, so I'm gonna have to hold it on the back, light it like that. Hold it on the back like, like that. That's not a little rhyme, isn't it? Okay, happy birthday! If you've had a birthday this week or next week, there you go. All right, kind of dip, dip, <laughs> dip your head in this. Look, I'll give you a <laughs> HP haircut. <laughs> that should be in the rubbish joke shop. Here we go, HP haircut. There you are. Oh dear. Don't wipe my head off. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> the 
rubbish. <laughs> Horrible. And do you know what the worst thing is? I haven't got any tea to wash it down with. I forgot. Oh dear, well, happy birthday. That was disgusting. That's enough of that then. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. Happy happy birthday. Okay. Give it a go, Joe, in the Brothers Joke Shop. So I have to try and remember some of these uh, some of these jokes and try them out on your friends and family. So what's new in the joke shop? Well, I've got this new coloured light put in, so that's kind of fun. And then the outside toilet, that's in as well. Oh, brilliant. Oh, you like, like my sign? Uh, beep, beep, to beep to you too. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, that's my warehouse sign on the junk shop. So a little bit of progress. Okay, so are you ready for some, some rubbish jokes? They, instead of making us laugh, they kind of make us go... Okay, here's your first one. Here we go. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, oh yeah, what's, uh, what's, 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 you, maybe you know this one. What's brown and sticky? Yeah, brown and sticky? A stick! Get it? A stick. All right, next joke, here we go. Uh, so what we got here? Um, what did the, what did the banana say to the doctor? I'm not peeling well. I'm not peeling very well. Okay, next joke. All right, going really well. Um, what 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 what? I nearly oh, <laughs> gave it away. What what falls but doesn't get hurt? Huh? Huh? Have a little think. What falls but doesn't get hurt? The rain. Yeah, the, the, the rain. Do you like that one? We've got another one for you. Okay, this, this is a knock-knock joke. So, learn this one. I can't really do the knock-knock joke properly because I haven't got somebody to say uh, who's there, all right? So, I'll just do everything, all right? So, here we go. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, uh, where were we? Um, okay, knock-knock. Who's there? Cows go. Cows go who? Nah, nah, nah. Cows go moo. You get it? Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's about your lot for the rubbish joke shop. Right, let's move on um, to uh, try this at home. Okay. All right, then. It's time for try this at home. Now, this month is all about creativity. We sum up creativity like this. It's imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. Now, I've got an absolute epic of a Bible story for you today. Oh, it's a corker. And let's meet the hero of today's story. She's the star. And her name is Esther. Now, Esther had a really difficult start in life. She lost both of her parents uh, when she was really young. She was Jewish and the Jews were being treated really badly. But amazingly, she had um, an awesome cousin and he had an absolute heart of gold. And his name was Mordecai. And these two really stuck together. And Mordecai helped out in the palace. This is the palace over here, by the way. It's, it's like the, the Persian palace of no way. Let's meet the king, because the king's about to have a contest. This is King Xerxes. Now, King Xerxes is going to have a contest, a beauty contest. So he sends out officials to get all of the most beautiful women in the whole land to enter. They have to go through a whole year of like beauty treatments. I mean, stuff like, um, I don't know, bathing in milk and uh, being squirted with perfume, maybe lying in a bed of roses for, for the whole year. I, I don't know. But they had to go through that and it ended up that Esther was entered into the contest as well. Now, 
Esther was a really beautiful woman. And she ended up winning the contest. Well done, Esther. But it, it wasn't just, she didn't just uh, win the contest, no, and get given a, a, a beautiful, shiny badge. No, she, uh, it, it was a bit more than that. She ended up becoming his wife. And being his wife, that meant she was the queen. Whoa. What an epic start. Well, remember I said that uh, Esther was Jewish? Well, the Jews weren't really popular in Persia at all, so uh, so she kept this as a bit of a secret from the king. But she's now queen, Queen Esther. So the king goes back to the palace. Now, the king doesn't really want any visitors or anything, so nobody's really allowed to go and see the king. Even the queen, she has to stay outside the palace and only speak to him when she she gets asked by the king. And the king had a really uh, powerful helper, and his name was his name was Haman. And Haman's the nasty guy in this story. Mm. Now Haman really thought he was very very important. And as he went around the palace, he wanted everybody to bow down to him because he thought he was so important. And everybody did, apart from one guy. And that person was Mordecai. Mordecai loved God. He worshipped God. And he wasn't going to bow down to a man. He showed respect and was kind, but he wasn't going to bow down like uh, Haman wanted. Well, this made Haman really mad. And we really see the real side of Haman. He was Mr. Nasty. And he decided to make a, a new law. He got him so mad at, at Mordecai and the Jews that uh, he, he wanted to make a law that he was going to get all the Jews killed in the land. And he went off to see the king about it. Well, he made up loads of stories uh, to the king about the Jews. And what's really sad is that the king got taken in by this. Well, can you see what the problem is with this story? Sure enough, he didn't like, he didn't like Mordecai and the Jews. But if he didn't like Mordecai, then that means he also didn't like Queen Esther. This meant that Queen Esther and Mordecai were going to be killed. And this put Esther in a crazy position. So it was Mordecai that heard about the story of Haman's plan that he told the king and told Queen Esther. Wow. This was a crazy time because Queen Esther, well, she knew that the king didn't know that she was Jewish and, um, she really had to decide what she was going to do. Was she going to keep quiet and let something terrible happen to the Jews? Or was she going to speak up? Now, it was really difficult for Esther. Because she really wanted to protect uh, the Jewish people and her, um, and her cousin. But it did mean that if she went to see the king about this, she, and, and, and said that she was Jewish the king could have had her killed he could have been so mad and could have gotten rid of her so she had to really think what she was going to do 
Was she going to put her life first? Or did she want to put the lives of all the Jewish people first as well? Now, if you have a little think, who was the king of the Jews? It was Jesus, wasn't it? So Jesus came from Jewish heritage. So she had to really think what she was going to do. So she thought and thought and thought. And finally, with Mordecai's encouragement, because he said to Esther, Esther, you've been born for such a time as this. Do something, Esther. This is your moment to shine. Go and see the king. You can save God's people. You can save us. So Esther decided to go for it. And she organized a meeting to go and see the king. And she did not know how he was going to react. So she went to see the king and spoke to the king and asked for a meeting and said, look, can we have a banquet? And I want uh, to have a banquet with you. And can we invite somebody else? I want to invite Haman as well. Well, they had their banquet together. And Queen Esther couldn't quite pluck up the courage to uh, she couldn't quite pluck up the courage to tell the king everything that Haman had in mind. So she said, uh, "Can we come back tomorrow and have another? Can we have another dinner tomorrow?" Which they did. And sure enough, the three of them all got together again. And Esther said to the king, do you know, king, there is somebody who is trying to get rid of all the Jews. And that person is trying to get rid of me too. Because I'm Jewish. Do you know, the king was so kind to Esther that he listened to her and didn't throw her out. And he said, who on earth has done this? Who is this person? And she told the king, it's Haman, your second in command. Haman's trying to get rid of all the Jews. Haman is trying to get rid of me. Wow. And sure enough, the king got rid of Haman and the king and Esther and Mordecai they saved the Jewish people and all of Haman's wealth was given, given to Mordecai it was incredible Esther had saved God's people Esther was so amazing because she put other people first and she had to think creatively how can I help this situation she had to think all by herself how can I get the king together tell him what had happened and get this meeting arranged knowing that it could mean such a costly price to her own life but she did it So let's think today, what can we do to put others first? What plan has God got for us? Because God had a plan and a purpose for Esther to creatively use her heart and her love to bless other people. And God wants to do that through you. 
God's got a plan for you. And you could be creative in how you show love and care and put God first and put others first. Let's pray. Father God, we are amazed by the story of Esther, how you used her, Lord, to protect your people. And Father God, I thank you that you use us too in your plan to creatively love others and love you. Father, you have a plan and a purpose for us that we are born for. We are born for this time. And I thank you for everything we've got planned. And as we, little by little, day by day, put you first, we can make a big difference in this world because we are created in your image. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. Thanks for watching Warehouse TV. Had a great week. See you later.